And welcome back, everybody, to our episode 11 of Summer with the Stars. I'm Owen Newkirk, and today I'm joined with one of the more vocal guys on the Texas Stars roster from last season, forward Mike Hedden. Mike, great to talk to you up in uh, in Canada. I would imagine that you're enjoying the climate in your hometown of Unionville a little bit different than perhaps what it's like down here in central Texas right now. Oh, yeah, it's, uh, it's beautiful weather up here right now. It's probably the weather that you guys, we have down in Texas around November. <laughs> So it's, uh, it's nice and crisp, and uh, it cools down at, at night, so you can open your windows and get a nice breeze in the house. It's uh, it's definitely not what you guys got down there right now, that's for sure. Now, I know that you, along with everybody else that we had at the, with the Stars last year, really are on board with the type of weather that Austin has during hockey season. But a lot of guys from the north, can Canadian guys like yourself, New Englanders like me, don't necessarily thrive when the temperature hits triple digits. Do you think you could handle a full summer here in Austin? Uh, no question about it. Not, <laughs> not a chance. I wouldn't even, wouldn't even be able to leave my house. So let me ask you this, because I, I know that you're up there doing your summer workouts. What kind of stuff are, are you really focused on right now? Because we've gotten past the early part of the summer where guys try to recover from the playoffs, you know, get through the draft, and then it's starting about free agency. Right now – Things are starting to amp up, I would imagine, as, as training camp is about a month away. Yeah, um, just uh, working out, and uh, I'm getting on the ice now a lot. Uh, I'm probably on twice a day, um, at least once a day, every day, so it's good. Getting on with some uh, local teams around here that are starting up their training camps in the next few weeks. They're just having some captain skates and getting some ice, so it's good to get out there and get my legs going and feel the puck, that's for sure. No. When you were sort of deciding, because you amongst a couple other players were talking about spending some extended time here during the end of the of the playoff season and then maybe coming down a little early, is just being, I mean, you go up to Ontario, there's probably an abundancy of ice surfaces in comparison to our area. Is that kind of a big reason, aside from the weather, to, to spend some time up there during the summer because you have more opportunities to skate when you're ready to do that? Yeah, um, I had originally planned to come down back in Austin, uh, beginning of, of the month here in August. But uh, there's just – I'm getting so much ice here now. It's just uh, – it wouldn't make sense for me to come back where I wouldn't get any ice in, in Austin. So that's pretty much the main reason why I'm staying until at least the end of the month, September. I can't, I can't pass up being on the ice twice, twice a day. It's just – it's too much – much ice time when did you start your on ice workouts because i know a lot of players oh, stay off it for a while part of the of the the mental and physical recovery of a long season i think i was back on the ice the second day i was home actually <laughs> after playoffs because uh, we we do uh we have this thing it's it's our stags hockey it's just a group of my buddies that we've been playing together for like the last 12 years and uh, every Friday night, we rent the ice, and we uh, have a good scrimmage against each other for an hour. There's uh, some good good talent out there. They're really good skates. Obviously, the competition level's high because nobody wants to lose to their buddies, right? <laughs> so we, we do that once a week, and uh, fortunate enough for me, uh, I had to jump right back in it as soon as I got home. So you didn't really get a whole rest and recovery period. I mean, it was a long year last year, uh, a good year in the sense of getting – the division title and, and going to the playoffs. It was your first time playing in the postseason as a professional. Did you feel like you needed a break after all that? Uh, yeah, I, I needed a little bit because I, I, I tweaked my uh, my knee there uh, the second last game against Oak City. So it, it was it was nagging for about a month after after the season. But uh, I just gave it some rest, and it's everything's good to go now. What it feel like to to get your first playoff games under your belt? Because you know you've played a, a number of years pro now, and to to not go to the playoffs, I mean that's the the goal of every team every year. Now you have the taste of that. Does that change your outlook on terms of of a what your goals were and b the way you prepared for the season? Uh, I think after making playoffs and I think like coming up short, uh, we're I'm going to come into the season and uh, we're going to prepare to go make a long playoff run. I wasn't happy with the way it ended. I thought we could have competed for the Calder Cup, but uh, obviously things didn't fall in place for us, and uh, we got to move forward. So uh, coming into this year, uh, we we know what you have to do now in playoffs to be successful. So 
So I'm I'm looking forward to being getting back into that playoff mode. Now, obviously, there was a a big sense of unfulfillment from all the players because you guys had such a good year, and you knew that you were being first place in the West going into the the playoffs. You felt as though not only were expectations high, but you had a feeling that you could beat anybody because the Stars beat everybody they played at least once. Uh, what was it about Oak City that was so difficult? Because it was one of the few teams that had a winning record against the Stars during the regular season. You know, they uh, they got a great goaltender. They uh good D. They got, you know, they just had a, a, a good team with a lot of experience. They knew how to play, and they, they always played us well for some reason. And uh, unfortunately, I don't like to make excuses, but I think we had some untimely injuries occur in, the, in that second round against Oak City that uh, I think might have hurt us a little bit. You had an injury. Your line mates were dealing with injuries. Alex Chason was coming off a shoulder injury with Dallas when he came back for the playoffs. Justin Dowling couldn't even take faceoffs because of a hand injury. And the top line uh, of Morin, Frazier, and Sevier all had injuries, probably multiple ones. How, how difficult do you think that is to think back knowing that every team gets banged up in the playoffs, but you guys had a level that you couldn't reach because of it? Yeah, it's tough. Um, obviously, you got to expect injuries are going to occur. Uh, unfortunately, we just uh, couldn't get the job done. It's, uh, it was disappointing. But, uh, you know, it's a, it's a new season, new year, so I'm looking forward to it. Now, you and I were actually going to do this interview yesterday, but you got called in to work, and I said, well, geez, a lot of guys nowadays have the, the, the luxury of being able to, to really f- focus full-time on training during the summer and, and just think about getting ready for next hockey season. Uh, what exactly are you doing uh, in the work capacity up there? Uh, it, uh, my buddy owns a uh, hockey before Max. It's, uh, they got a hockey skating treadmill in there with a rapid shot, and then they got a, we do dry land with kids. So from 10 to 8 o'clock at night, it's, it's booked solid with kids doing a skating treadmill, learning how to skate one-on-one with an instructor. And then you got kids doing dry land, and then you got another instructor in there teaching kids how to shoot in the rapid shot. So it's, it's my bunny that owns it, so like I like to help out when I can. Uh, it keeps me, keeps me busy so I don't just sit around on the couch all day after my workout. And it's fun. I, you know, I enjoy interacting with the kids and helping them out, and they get a kick out of it too. A lot of people around here, uh, especially new hockey fans, are are you know experiencing seeing ice for the first time because it's not a natural occurrence here in Central Texas during the winter time. But what uh, many of them have probably never seen a skating treadmill. Can you just for those that aren't familiar with it, can you kind of describe what that's like? Uh, it's um, it's synthetic plastic. It's uh, about probably five feet wide and it's a little longer than your your average treadmill and you just uh you go on with your skates and you uh strap a harness on you're hooked up in case you fall you don't, you don't go flying off the edge and then uh you just the instructor stands in front of you and uh we pretty much just teach you how to lengthen your stride stride recovery you know keep your knees bent and all that stuff so it's good it's fun the kids like it and it's uh we go on after our shift, and it's a it's a great cardio workout too. Does it even feel like skating on ice? Is it is it close to simulating the real thing? Yeah, it, it's pretty close. When yeah, you can get it going up pretty fast. And and the good thing, the neat thing about the treadmill is uh, it can incline and decline, so you you can be skating uphill. It never really happens during a regular hockey game, although you hear people writing about a game saying it seems like the game's being played where the ice is tilted in one direction, but. Uh, what was the first time that you jumped on the treadmill with it with an incline? That had to be a bit of a weird sensation. Uh, yeah, my first time was uh, I think three four years ago, and uh, all my buddies were laughing at me because I actually fell. <laughs> it's, 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 it's very awkward your first time on to get get used to it. Like the treadmill's moving underneath you, and it's just it's a weird feeling at first. But it only takes you about two three tries on the treadmill to to get it under your belt. And get going is that sort of supplementary to your workouts i mean it, it sounds like most of the time it's more of an instructive thing that you're doing as opposed to getting extra training in yeah uh, i i only hop on the treadmill at, at night if, uh, if i've been working all day and i didn't have time to, to get any cardio in what was it that made your decision to want to re-sign with the texas stars uh obviously i i love i love playing down there um i love the atmosphere in the building 
you know, I, it's a great organization. I like all the guys. And I, I was getting a couple offers from other A teams, but I, I told my agent, if I'm going to stay in the A, you know, I, I'd love to be back in Texas. And I just wanted to wait until I heard from Whitey and seeing what, uh, what their plans were, if they were going to offer me a contract back or, or not. And then uh, luckily um, with that Sagan trade, uh, obviously seeing Fraz and Smitty head out to Boston opened up some room for me. And, you know, I'm glad I waited because uh, – now I'm back in, in Austin and uh, look forward to another season. Interesting because a lot of players in your position who don't have that NHL contract but have had a lot of success you know, playing a year or two in the American League sometimes think about looking over to Europe. And I know you probably know lots of guys that are in that situation. Uh, even one of your teammates, Luke Gazik, who said he never once was talking to any European teams, was rumored to have talked to several of them. And he said, I don't know how that started. But – is that is that lure of the appeal of of playing in Europe, uh, 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 one that you really have to to, to try to to deal with? Uh, yeah, especially I think at, at my age now too, where I'm getting a little older now. Um, I uh, there was some interest. Uh, there was some teams calling my agents asking about me, but uh, I never had any actual offers. Um, so uh, I wasn't quite ready to go over yet. Anyways, um, you know, I've only been in the A for two years. Uh, you know, I'm just I'm really, I'm, I'm really looking forward to playing a full season in, in the A this year. You know, obviously because the lockout last year, you know, kind of hurt, and then my first year, obviously being a rookie and having to earn my stripes, uh, I didn't get to play a whole lot the first half of my first year either. So, you know, I, I'm uh, I'm focused, and I, I'm I'm really looking forward to the start of the season. Well, it's interesting you point that out because you've played 69 games your first year with the Texas Stars. And then last year you played in 61. The lockout was hard on you for a couple of reasons. One, because early in the season it was a numbers game and there were times where you didn't play when you you know, certainly deserved to. And the coaches recognized that. They said there are guys that are being scratched that should be in the lineup, but we, we just they, they you know said that everybody understood that it was a numbers game at that point. But also, you didn't get to go to training camp in Dallas at the start of the year, which you were supposed to go, you told me. So you missed out on a couple of things because of that lockout. Yeah, um, yeah, uh, I was excited to go to the, the training camp last year, but obviously things didn't work out that way. Uh, you know, there's not much you can do. Just uh, you got to stay focused. So you get a chance to do it this year. How excited are you to to go to Frisco now? You know, the Stars had sort of a mini practice, went to Dallas during the end of the lockout, sort of a, a Monday Tuesday before a, a road trip up to to the Midwest. But just to even skate at the at the NHL practice facilities and be around some of those big name guys was that was that sort of a mini thrill to sort of start to get a taste of what it's like to be up there yeah it was it was a it was definitely a good experience you know I had a good time it was obviously a little rough though because we were coming off a three and three and then we had to fly right to Dallas for practice and then we left we had a game the next night and we only had three lines (laughs) Yeah, it, it was a uh, it was a rough six days there, but you know, all in all, it was it was good experience, and uh, I enjoyed the time there. You guys, that that week was actually a big week for for the stars in a number of reasons because it was the second kind of team to to sort of emerge after that lockout ended. We sort of had the pre lockout, the post lockout, and then that third team, which was the post trade deadline, because there was so much turnover. But you, along with Justin Dowling and Alex Chason, were a big part of last year's team. Your line clicked, especially in the second half of the year, and it started right in that trip to Chicago, right after the the little mini NHL post lockout camp in Frisco. What was it about it? We've talked to both of your line mates this summer already, but what is it about that trio that you guys clicked so well? Uh, you know, I can't really pinpoint anything in particular to say why we did so well together. Uh, obviously, I think chemistry helps because we're, you know we're all really good friends off the ice. We hang out, we golf together, go out for lunch. And then uh, on the ice, I think we just, um, you know, everyone's got their own own thing they bring to the table. You know, like Dowling is such a skilled player with great vision. You know, Chase on the big body who can get the puck in the corner, get to the net, and he, he can make plays and score. And then, you know, I just, I crash and bang, and I just try to get them the puck when I can. Just read off each other really well. And, you know, it, it really helps, too, when you play with people you know, night in and night out, you know, you, you get to know their habits and where they're going to be on the ice. 
you know, your both of your line mates mentioned your you said crash and bang. They said that you're always skating at top speed and that you they know that you're going to go in and absolutely level somebody. And, and Justin right. Dowling said that he really felt it it opened up both you and Chase on the way you played open up a lot of space for him to do some of the skilled things that he can do. Yeah, well, definitely. When when you're in there running the D, they're going to turn the puck over a lot. And, you know, they're, just thinking off the top of my head, there's a couple plays I remember where the D are just panicking with the puck and ribbing it, and Dowling would be sitting there right on the boards, picking it up and coming in and getting a shot on net. Definitely helps. And, you know, he, he's such a smart player, too, man. I give that kid a lot of credit. You know, he's very skilled. and just, uh, I, I'm glad he's back with us. Let's just leave it at that. You guys had an amazing chemistry, and you mentioned the fact that you, all three of you say that, you know, hey, we hung out off the ice, we were really friendly. There is a little bit of a competition between you three friends, and it has to do with the golf course. And I know that Justin Dowling is sort of earning this reputation of being a pretty good golfer and winning some dinners off of you. Uh, I, I hear that you're actually disputing that claim. Well, he's a cheater. <laughs> Me, we had uh, we had a deal one day. We were playing for dinner, and it was me and Glenny. It was supposed to be against Dowling and uh, Baldy because they were roommates. So we we're like, okay, well we'll play it because we knew Baldy wasn't the greatest. So he shows up with Carl Sneep, who ended up shooting the round of his life <laughs> and beating us by two strokes. So we had to take him to Fleming's for dinner, which was no problem. Whatever, pay up, pay up. But then we tried to play him the next day. And he, Dowling wouldn't play us for dinner. <laughs> didn't give you a chance to re- yeah. recover your money. No, he didn't at all. Little cheater. <laughs> Bring, uh, brings in a ringer. Now that you've had this opportunity to to air your grievances, do you give him another chance? Uh, you you go and challenge him again? Oh, I'm looking forward to it. I've been golfing an awful lot this summer. <laughs> you have this reputation on the team of being a real character guy. Uh, obviously, you seem to get along with everybody. Uh, it kind of reminds me a little, little bit of a guy like Luke Gazik, who, in his own way, also really brings the team together. Do you think that's a really important part uh, of your game is to not only go out there and play the minutes and put up the, the goals and points that you do, but also bring that smile, that laughter into the locker room? Yeah, uh, I think it's important to, to have uh, some role guys in there to, to keep the mood light and uh, joke around. Uh, Fortunus is another one. He's uh, one of the biggest pranksters I've ever played with. <laughs> so every time he, he does a prank, he'll never admit it was him. So it's pretty good. And, and if you try to get him back, you're going to be in trouble because he's going he's gonna to mess with you the next few days. Is it even worth trying to, to fight, get into a, a prank war with a guy like that? No, not even close because he'll just take it to a whole new level where you didn't even think it was allowed. Now he's probably the best denial uh, guy who he denies more than anybody I've ever seen, and yeah. I, I, it, it's part of his whole shtick, which is kind of funny. But what what's one of the things that you've seen Max Fortunus do? We're, we're going to betray the confidence of the captain for a minute. That that you that he would obviously say I had nothing to do with, but you know it was him. Uh, well, see, that's the thing about Max. You, you never really know for sure that it was him. <laughs> But uh, the one that sticks out is uh, the one day they taped all of uh, Austin Smith's gear outside the rink, up on all the lampposts and everything, <laughs> with duct tape. So he had to climb up there <laughs> and cut it all down. Uh, I thought that was pretty funny. There were pictures on Twitter of him climbing it. The one, the, the tape, uh, the sticks on the fire hydrant were also, it looked like it was going to take a while to get those off. Yeah, uh, he was he was out there for a while because he had to shimmy up the pole <laughs> to cut everything down. Now you were the uh, you were the victim of one said prank, and I I didn't even remember it until just now that we actually caught on video. We were in, if you remember, we were in Grand Rapids for a road trip, and there was a practice day, and I think you went almost the entire organized practice session with a, a piece of inflated bubble gum stuck to the top of your helmet and. Uh, you seem really confused when the guys kept calling you bubbles for about 50 minutes. Yeah, uh, I had no idea what was going on there. Um, that was a good one. Obviously, I'm pretty sure it was Fortunus again there. <laughs> but that was good. Everyone had a good laugh out of it, so kind of took the pressure off practice, even though uh, Willie was laughing at me. <laughs> I didn't understand why at the time. I just thought I was having a really bad practice. <laughs> But, uh, it was it was good to know that it was the gum on the on the helmet rather than 
the lack of skill I was showing that practice. How important is your decision to come back in part because of the fact that the coaching staff is returning? You know, you have Willie Desjardins, you have Doug Lister, who uh, established themselves as a pretty solid first uh, you know, year in the AHL. Was that pretty important for you that – uh, that they were coming back as as part of being with the Texas Stars. Uh, yeah, absolutely. Uh, Willie's uh, such a great coach. You know, our, our practices are quick, up tempo. I like it. And um, Doug's a great guy. You know, you, you can talk to him about anything. So yeah, you know, uh, I love playing for those two guys. I, and I, I'm glad they they stuck around for another year. And I'm glad I can play underneath them again. I don't know if you noticed on our website, but we've been chronicling who wore what jersey number throughout the history of the Stars because this is the fifth year anniversary of the of the team coming up this year in 2013-14. You were on the website just this past week. Uh, you're the now the most – you've played more games in the number 26 jersey than anybody else in, in Texas Stars history, and I know you'd probably trade a few uh, distinctions for maybe a Calder Cup ring or something like that, but uh, – Aside from all the other things you've mentioned about wanting to play for Texas, does is, is that is that something that you kind of hold special? The fact that you've been able to to be in a certain jersey more than anybody else? Uh, no, not really. It doesn't really bring any, you know, because uh, you know they've only been there for five years, so <laughs> you know it doesn't really mean a whole lot to me. Obviously, it's nice, you know, and uh, I'll, hopefully, I can keep adding points for that number twenty six, but. No, I never gave that any thought or anything, but uh, it's it's nice to know, I guess. Something that you do have a distinction of that I'm sure that you are a little bit more proud of is you're only the second player in team history. Again, uh, this team's only been around for four seasons, but to score a penalty shot goal. Uh, no, you and Colton Seaver, the only two guys have ever done that, uh, and you did it in kind of a special scenario. It was April 14th of 2012, so it wasn't last season, but the end of the season before, and it was the second period at home in front of a sellout crowd at CPC against the Oklahoma City Barons in the second period, about five and a half minutes in. Can you walk us through what that experience was like? Uh, Nerve-wracking. <laughs> very, I was very nervous going out there to shoot because, uh, you know, all eyes in the rink are on you. So uh, I wasn't going to try a stick handle because that's not my forte. <laughs> so <laughs> I knew I was just going down and shooting low blocker, which – Worked a lot for me the, my first year. Last year, not so much. <laughs> I have to come up with a. I have to come up with a new move this year. Another really big highlight from you from last year, and I'm going to play you a clip because I'm sure that you can maybe even guess it or you'll picture it. But I want you to listen to this goal that you scored. It was on March 13th against the Abbotsford Heat, and again, it was in the second period. Here we go. Dowling finds Hedden over the line. Hedden going wide on Carson. Cuts back to the middle. Drag shoots. He scores! Oh, what a shot! And what a move by Mike Hedden! He was falling to the ice as he pulled the trigger and lifted it to the top right corner over the glove of Danny Taylor. And this game is tied just a minute 33 into the second period on a highlight reel goal from Mike Hedden. Now, I remember it as one of the more stunning goals of the season for the Texas Stars. It made the AHL's highlights of the year that they put together on their website. Tell us a little bit about what it's like to score as you're falling to the ice. You were almost horizontal to the ice when you took that shot. Yeah, uh, Lord, I think I blacked out on the play there. <laughs> <laughs> no, it was just uh, it was a, it was a good transition. You know, Dallin made a nice little chip over to me, and... Uh, I caught the D a little flat-footed when I caught in there, and uh, I was about to shoot anyways, but uh, he uh, took me down, and luckily I was still able to get the shot off, and somehow, some way, it, it found the back of the net. And I think probably the more special point that most players would indicate as well is not only did you have that great goal, you scored again. At that The second goal was the game winner. And you were the first star of the game, but of all that, the team won. And how much more special is it when you score a really great goal and the team wins, as opposed to doing something special and the team loses? It kind of takes some of the spirit out of it. Uh, it's uh, anytime you score and your team don't win, it's uh, it's disappointing, and you don't even really care that you scored. So when when you score a big goal or any goal and you help your team win, it's uh, it's, it's nice. Um, I'd rather score no goals and have our team win every game than to score every game and lose every game. So, obviously, uh, when you can contribute and, and you guys win, 
it's uh, it's a huge bonus and it feels great. I wanted to ask you about the early part of your AHL career because we were doing some history stuff to get ready for this interview, and I saw, and I remember putting this in your bio, but you played against the Texas Stars and at Cedar Park Center before you ever played for the Texas Stars, and you did so on a call-up with Grand Rapids uh, back in 2011 in March, and you actually got your first career AHL point with an assist in that game with in, in another jersey. Did you, at that point, you probably never thought you'd be playing for the Texas Stars six or seven months later? No, not at all. Um, prior to that, I never thought I'd be playing in the AHL either, so you never know what can happen. But that was a, that was a fun game. Um, that's when I got the first taste of the Texas atmosphere and uh, the crowd that they get at the game. I, I was pretty lucky, too, when I was playing with Grand Rapids. I had a, I had a nice skilled line. I was playing with Yoakam Anderson and Gustav Nyquist, who are two big players now for Detroit Red Wings. So it was it was a good line. As that's a heck of a line because Nyquist was one of the top scorers in the league last year, and they both spent time in Detroit. Uh I mean, talk about skill. I mean, that's a totally different look compared to the Dowling, Head, and Chase on line last year because it's a different skill set, isn't it? Yeah, you know, obviously Nyquist is probably one of the more skilled players I've played with and had to play against. <laughs> but uh, I, wouldn't, I wouldn't put Dowling too far down off that list. And Chase on and, and uh, Anderson, they're both kind of big bodies, kind of play the same way too. So, you know, it's not that far off with the two guys I was playing with now. How excited then, were you to see Chason go up to Dallas and do what he did? Because I, I know everybody thought that he'd get a taste at some point, but nobody probably thought that he'd go out and score uh, six goals in seven games. I, I was laughing because <laughs> I couldn't believe it. Every time I was watching and checking the box score, I was seeing Chason score it again. It was unbelievable. I was, I was happy for him. I don't know if you saw his first goal in his first NHL. It was his second NHL game. But uh, I gave him a hard time when we did our interview with him last month that he was looking around for somebody to hug in celebration, and that was as funny as it was scoring. Did, did that just epitomize the way he is as a player? Uh, you no, know, I, th- I think if you look back at all his goals that he scored up there, they're all the same, just driving the net hard with the stick on the ice. You know, he's, he's big body, and he's such a skilled and smart player too. Like uh, I'm glad he did well, and you know, I, I would love to see him up there for the whole season this year if he can. If not, obviously, I'd love to have him back, too, in Texas playing on his line again. But you know, for his sake, at his age, I know, I'd love to see him up in Dallas. Well, Mike, I still have a half a page of notes that we uh, don't have time to talk about, which is good because we'll probably have plenty to talk about in our next interview for the uh, preseason. But thanks so much for joining us. Really appreciate it. Hope you enjoy the, the rapidly endings part of your summer and I look forward to seeing you in either Dallas or Cedar Park real soon. Oh, yeah. Sounds good, Owen. Thank you very much for taking the time to do an interview with me. Always a pleasure. That was Mike Hedden for Episode 11 of the Texas Stars Summer with the Stars series. I'm Owen Newkirk. Thanks for joining us, and we will be back right here on TexasStarsHockey.com next week. So long, everybody.